Hello and welcome to the OTV channel. So, not a review today as such. I'm not looking at a distro. I'm doing something slightly different. You know I love my tiling window managers. And I started to realise that perhaps that's a little close-minded, just focusing on the tilers. Because we've got some great um, stacking window managers out there as well. And I thought it was time to look at some of them. And I'm going to start that off today by looking at Fluxbox. See you after the intro. Okay, welcome back. Um, yeah, so Fluxbox, it's a stacking window manager that I've not really spent any time in. But after looking at Haiku last week um, and seeing how popular that seems to have been uh, with viewers, I thought, well, let's have a look at another stacking window manager, if you like, but this time one that's uh, within Linux. And Fluxbox, well, it's been there for a long, long time. I think it was a fork originally of Blackbox, uh, all the way back in 2001. And I'll be honest, I, I've probably not seen it since the days of damn small Linux, uh, which used to use it as its default window manager. But it's there as default anyway in Slackware, Slackware 15 included, and I'm just not using it. So I thought, what am I missing? Is it really old hat and very 1990s? Or can it be configured and used just like you'd use any other modern window manager? Well, that's what I'm going to do. I've just installed it on Arch. Let's see how I get on. Well, there is a saying, uh, don't judge a book by its cover. And certainly when you first launch uh, Fluxbox, <laughs> I think that's pretty relevant, relevant because it, it's... It doesn't look great, let's be honest. But, uh, you know, the same can be said for just about any window manager out there prior to it being configured. So don't be put off. What you get here is a window manager that manages windows. You have a taskbar here at the bottom with a little button letting you know you're on Workspace ONE. And you can use the arrow keys to move between workspaces. There's four configured by default. But you can add more. You can take them away. Whatever you want to do. You then have uh, essentially a Windows list. It's actually showing that I've got OBS running on here. And you have a system tray. Which has the clock in. And currently has OBS. What you don't have is a decent menu at this point. You can right-click, and this is pretty much all that you've got. Uh, very little, to be honest. Uh, you do actually have a link to uh, some themes that I've added, and I actually all the rest of these are default, but I added Arc Dark as a standard theme. So I'm going to click on that, and... Uh, I prefer it, I've got to say. And normally when you make a change, you need to reload the config. And that's what we now get. And I quite like the look of that, I've got to say. I really do. Um, it's as near to, I suppose, a Nord theme as uh, I could hope for. But uh, we'll worry about that afterwards. It's still pretty basic. We haven't got an applications menu there, but we have at least got our right-click menu. So how do we generate an applications menu? Well, there's a couple of ways of doing this. Um, Fluxbox has its own built-in menu generator, and I believe if you uh, type in a terminal Fluxbox dash generate underscore menu it will do it but most people tend to use third-party applications um, such as menu maker which is pretty good i've tried a few of these third-party applications over the last few days but the best one that i've come across is something called fb menu gen 
So let's open a terminal. Right click currently only gives me X term as a term terminal, and I don't really want to use that. But if I do Alt F2, I get a little uh, run dialog, and that should allow me to open Alacrity, and it does. And I can just make that a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. So I'm going to run FB menu gen. So FB menu, oops, helps if I sp uh, spell it right. On its own, that will generate an applications menu. But if you put the I switch in there, it will actually generate a menu with icons. Now I know there's uh, probably some uh, traditional users of Fluxbox here who are telling me that, or will be commenting that you don't need a menu generator. You can build it up manually, you know, in the config files. And you certainly don't need icons. Well, I'd agree you can do all of that, but I like a little bit of bling. And if there's something to do it for me, I'm going to do it. So FB menu gen dash I, a new menu has been successfully generated. Uh, you do have access to that in the AUR. But just as a word of caution, you will need to uh, install Perl-GTK3. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And unfortunately, it didn't pull that down as a standard dependency. So if I right-click now, you can see that my menu is now looking so much better. And I've got an advanced settings menu now where I can kind of rerun the menu generation at any time, which is all good. Or I can open up my Fluxbox menu and configure bits and pieces of the system. So first things first, let's look at the toolbar. I do not like a toolbar at the bottom. So I'm going to make that go to the top. So that's looking much better now for myself. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, tab options. I don't want to do anything like that at the moment. Transparency, I'm not too bothered about at the moment. Slit, by the way, the, you'll see this reference to slit. And what that is, um, a little bit like the window manager, uh, window maker, it, it's essentially like a toolbar where you can place dockable apps. I've had a look at that in window maker. I don't like them. So I'm not going to play with that at all. But so far, we, we've got a nice menu system. Uh, we've got an application menu built in with the system. And we now have our toolbar on the top. So what we're also going to need now is uh, some wallpaper. So if I launch Alacrity again, I do actually have Nitrogen installed on this. So if I type nitrogen dash dash restore and put an ampersand in it, there we go. We've now got some wallpaper. So already it's looking a lot better. So let me just shut that down. How do we get it to look a little bit better from here? Well, um, there's quite a few things we can do. I'm just going to launch PC Man FM and show you where we configure everything at the moment with this. What you will find is that once you launch Fluxbox for the first time, you will get a docked Fluxbox directory in your home directory. And the good thing about Fluxbox is everything in here is pretty much just a text file. So you have a keys file, where you can put in all your key bindings if you don't want to use the menu. Uh, I'll just show you that and open it with, say, Genie. And you can see it's a pretty standard uh, text file, which is just looking at uh, the key bindings. You have the menu that's just been generated, which you can, of course, uh, modify should you wish. And that has automatically put in all of the different uh, icons. If you didn't want to generate a menu with icons and you wanted to enter all these icons manually yourself, well, go for it, fill your boots. Not for me. Uh, we then have a file called overlay. 
And what this is, it's a file where, irrespective of the style that you've got applied, the theme you've got applied, if you want something consistent across styles, for instance, you want to stick with a single font and font size, irrespective of what theme that you use, you can use this. Uh, what else have we got here? We also have the window menu, which I'm not going to touch, but essentially that defines the structure of your right-click menu. And we also have an app menu if you want to make modifications to the look and feel of particular applications. I've not bothered with that. And then most importantly, you have a file called init where you can make lots of different changes. So we've got a lot to go at here. All I've done so far is give this a little bit of wallpaper, shifted the taskbar to the top, applied a theme and applied um, a menu generation app so that we've got something we can actually work with. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this now. I'm going to have a play and we'll come back and we'll see how I get on. Okay, so I'm back. Um, and I've done quite a little bit of fiddling. Um, one of the, the features that I quite like, though, I'm not going to be able to keep, I don't think, if I decide that I want to keep the title bar on Windows. Um, and I'll show you what that function is. When we looked at Haiku last week, one of the things I quite liked was the ability to uh, kind of combine and group two windows into one. And you have the same ability on this. So if I hold down the control button, I can drag this second window over to the first and it will automatically group itself. I really like that. So if I type something into uh, both windows, LA for instance, and I wanted now to move between the different tabs, I would just do Alt, number two, number one, number two, etc., etc. So I really quite like that. And you do control to pull them apart again. The problem is I really do not like this title bar there. And I think I'm prepared to go without that facility. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, go to my Fluxbox directory, and I'll show you how to get rid of those title bars. First of all, you go into the init file, and I'm going to open up Genie so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. Down here, you've got uh, one particular item that says Session Screen Naught Default Deco. Normal means you get everything. All I want showing on this is the border. So I'm going to save that. Now, having the border there is all well and good. I haven't made a huge amount of changes to anything else in this file, apart from I've made a slight change on the clock format, so we now have time and date. But I'm going to quit this, and I'm going to quit this. And I'm going to restart Fluxbox. Right, so now I've restarted it. If I was to um, bring in, as you can see, a particular window, um, it now just has a nice border. I quite like the way that looks. And I can still move this around, you know, if I want to, by holding down the Alt key, but I can't combine them anymore or at least I've not seen a method to combine. Nevertheless, I really like the way this is looking now. I prefer the windows I'm launching not to have decoration. And at the end of the day, I can still do a lot with these. So I've set up all the key bindings. If I wanted to, for instance, maximize that window, I've set mod four as my main mod key. I could just maximize it. If I did mod Z, which was the key binding I used, once again, I bring it back to its normal place. Or I could indeed do mod shift Z 
and I can minimize it to the taskbar. So I've still got the minimize and maximize functions without actually losing out um, by using key bindings instead of having a mouse driven desktop. But unfortunately, as I said, that grouping and tabbing facility is something I have lost. Let me uh, open up a file manager and uh, go to Fluxbox again, and I'll show you what else I've done. In the keys section, I have basically completely rewritten it. And I've basically set everything up so that the keys are very similar to what I normally use in uh, a tiling window manager. I've set up my audio keys as well, and I've put in a number of custom keys to open Firefox, Genie, Rofi, etc., etc. The syntax is quite simple. Mod 4, Mod 1, F will open the file manager. Mod 4, Mod 1, so this is kind of super key plus alt. Uh, plus C will uh, bring up my Rofi emoji, so that. And I've got my standard uh, Rofi menu that I use on everywhere, just mod four, which is the super key, plus space. And it brings that up. So to be honest, I don't really use the standard menu because I'm going to use Rofi. So this has been really good. I've been able to customize everything quite a lot there. Um, the init menu, clearly I've uh, changed the default deco and I also changed the size of uh, the taskbar up here. Uh, what else have I done? Yeah, in the overlay menu, I decided that I didn't want um, particular styles, if I change styles, to create, you know, to use a different font than the one I like. So essentially, I've just used this, this overlay file, to dictate that I want Ubuntu Mono Nerd font there all the time. Simple as that. Um, so that's all good. In my startup menu, this is really simple. I, I'm doing a merge of my X resources. I'm launching PyCom to get some transparency there. I'm uh, hooking in the Mate Pole Kit. I'm using nitrogen dash dash restore and I'm setting the uh, the UK keyboard, which is all working particularly well. Um, and yeah, it does seem to work. I'm getting transparency. You can see the folders behind there. I can open and shut apps as I want. What else have I done? The menu I haven't touched, the slit list I haven't touched at all, all the window menu. Uh, what else have I touched? Um, I haven't touched the app menu, but I'll tell you what I have done. I quite like the art dark style, um, but I wanted to just slightly modify some of the colors so it really was um, Nord colors. So what I did is I copied across the art dark style folder which is in USR Share Fluxbox Styles. And renamed it to Nord. I then opened Theme CFG. And I changed some of the colors in here. Just to make sure it was kind of following what I wanted it to follow. The, the Nord colors. I also, in this uh, theme file... I added three entries at the bottom here, window border width, uh, window focused border color, and window unfocused border color. So I've now got a nice little bit of a blue border that's just two pixels thick on all of my windows. I'm amazed at how easy it is just to copy an existing style folder over and play with it to suit yourself. So, Really happy with that. Have I done anything else on here? Um, I don't think so, really. I think it's pretty much how I want it now. So if I shut that down, my menu's now looking very nice. This is working for me. I can launch whatever, 
but if I just launch a terminal, as I say, I can maximize it with uh, the Windows Z uh, key binding, hit it again and it toggles back, or I can simply minimize it with the Windows Shift Z. And there it is, minimized to the toolbar. If I want to move this around, I use the Alt key and I can move it around. I don't know if I can actually resize it at all. I don't think I can actually using this. It doesn't look like I can from here. But to be honest, I'm not that bothered. i tell you what else I can do. I've actually explored suedo... Sue... Almost tiling. Suedo tiling, would that be right? By uh, building in the super, the shift, and the left key. So I can tile on the left-hand side or the right-hand side or up or down or back to the left. I can open another terminal there and there you go. I've got pseudo tiling. Um, found a little set of key bindings when I was uh, going online and looking to see what it did. And if I just open up my keys menu here, you can see this here that uh, d -d 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 tiling. I'm using a command macro command and mod four shift left, mod four shift right, etc. etc. And it's all working pretty pretty well. Mod four, one, two, three, four, five, six, it just you know takes me to workspace one to six. If I want to send a window to a specific workspace, it's super shift to send that there. And if I want to follow along, it's super control followed by the workspace. All the standard stuff you find in uh, all the window managers that I've been working with. So I'm, I'm really quite pleased with how this, this has turned out, I have to say. Um, I would have liked to keep that tapping and grouping function, but nevertheless, um, I think I've turned what was a pretty plain window manager into something that now is quite special. I should say at this point, I have kept the standard toolbar up here. Um, you don't have to. Uh, you can disable that toolbar and you can use something like Tint 2. No reason also why you couldn't use Polybar although you would lose the uh, minimize function onto, onto the bar, because I don't think Polybar yet has a module that allows you to do that. You could use the XFCE panel. You could use the LXDE panel. You do have quite a few options. Just to kind of let you know what to do, if you do decide that you wanted a different bar, you would go again into this init file, and I'm going to open this up. And what you would do, you would find the taskbar. And I'm just looking for, or they call it the toolbar here. So session screen zero toolbar. It's set to true for visibility. You are going to set it to false. That will stop it showing up. However, in this little item here, toolbar tools, you'll see the system tray is listed there. If you want the system tray on a new dock to work, you will need to delete the system tray out of this uh, this particular, uh, uh, what do they call it, uh, init file. I might try that. I might actually try messing about, I think, with uh, Polybar in the future. But so far, really happy with it. <laughs> Don't judge a book by its cover. I think it looks quite nice now. It's all Nord coloured. Uh, let's have a chat. Right, so that's Fluxbox. Um, and quite surprising for me. I suppose I had it in my mind that this, this was an old 1990s window manager. But actually, what struck me is it was so easy to configure. By the way, I have found a way to resize. I don't know why I didn't do what I do with all the other window managers. When I hit the Alt key, I just had to do a right mouse click rather than the left mouse click to move, and everything was good. Um, 
So I'd certainly recommend Fluxbox to anybody who's looking at a stacking uh, window manager. Certainly on a par with Openbox as far as I can see. And just as flexible, if not a little easier to configure. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, as normal, please like and subscribe. If you'd like to support me on my Patreon, as these fine people behind me have done, well, thank you very much. It would be much appreciated. I hope you have a great weekend, and I'll see you next week. Cheers.